People don't think that there's enough Rolly in the podcast. Guys, I hear you. You don't think there's enough Rolly? Here he is. For everybody who's missed him, Rolly's going to make a couple of small appearances in um, today's podcast for your pug viewing pleasure. Just a little pug interruption for you, but let's crack on with the show. <laughs> and welcome back to Inside Number 23, my channel which is all about knitting and sewing, at least it used to be, <laughs> and generally living the craftiest life possible. My name is Katie, you can find me pretty much everywhere on social media as Miss Lavelli, and we also have a Ravelry group for the podcast which you can search by heading over to Ravelry and just searching Inside Number 23 in the groups tab, and that is full of details for all our cows, that's where I also post my show notes, although I do also pop them down below. They're just slightly more interactive on Ravelry. And I'm coming to you as always from Hertfordshire, which is just north of London in the UK, where I live with my husband Emrys, with our pug puppy Rolly. And um, yeah, it's a lovely sunny day today. It's I'm coming to you a little later than um, normal for reasons that will become clear as I kind of describe what I've been up to the last couple of days. But it's just really, really lovely to be back with you. I just wanna welcome back everyone who's been here before. Thank you so much for visiting with me again. And a big hello and welcome to anybody who is new. I have noticed some additional subscribers recently. So thank you for coming and spending a little bit of time with, with me today. And we've got so much stuff to to talk about I am really really excited it's going to be a good one for you this week I think <sighs> my goodness it feels like so much has happened since I spoke to you last week um it's been pretty busy it was half term here in the UK which means that all of the schools were on holiday for a week um which means a lot more kids around but also it means that my mum was around more because she works at a school so I spent a lot of time with her. Emrys and I had our Valentine's Day together. We did it a couple of days late because he was actually working on Valentine's Day, but we had a lovely day together. And um, just yesterday, my mum and I actually went to Unravel, which yes, I know I hadn't talked about on the podcast previously, but it was kind of a last minute thing. I wasn't intending to go because obviously in just a couple of weeks time, Oh my goodness, I'm so excited and also can't believe it so soon now. Um, I'm going to be heading to Edinburgh Yarn Festival for the first time ever, which is just like mind-blowingly amazing. Um, so I wasn't intending, intending to go to Unravel this year, um, but as it came up, so many people said that they were going to be there, including some vendors who I was very, very excited to, um, number one, meet, and number two, actually buy things from them, um, but more on that again later. But yeah, kind of last minute, my mum and I decided that it would be nice for us to go to Unravel, which we did yesterday. And so yeah, it literally feels like every second of my spare time has been completely jam-packed this week. I, I don't even really know how I've managed to get that much done, but I have got some knitting done, I have got some crafting done um, that I'm going to be sharing with you this week. I also have quite a lot of stash enhancement, and I know I'm going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival, I should be, you know, not necessarily spending as much money and all of this kind of stuff, but I'm not going to apologise for it. I am happy that everything that I have has come to live with me this week. And um, yeah, I just have some really lovely stuff to share with you. So let's kind of jump right in. I have a couple of bits of administrative stuff to deal with right at the beginning of the podcast. Let's get those out of the way. First of all, reminders that we're currently running two cows, two knit alongs for the podcast. Um, that is the Andy Sat Along, which will be lasting until the end of March, which is to knit up a garment by the incredible designer Andy Satterland um, that is still going strong. We also have the Harry Potter cowl which is a year-long knit along this year uh, which will um, be closing at the end of December 2017. Um, all Harry Potter knitting, crocheting, weaving, spinning, all of that good stuff is welcome but the full details of both of those cowls are over on the Ravelry group. I have something quite exciting to talk to you about um, in terms of someone who got in touch 
touch with me recently about an amazing project which I myself am very very excited about. Basically um, Hannah Lisa who you may know from Instagram, she is Hannah on the Road on Instagram and I believe her podcast is by the same name. Um, and she got in touch with me and let me know about a project that she is currently taking part in. It is a kind of self-published book of patterns and it's called Woods. It's going to be this really gorgeous collection um, of different patterns celebrating um, local breed specific European yarns. It's a very modern collection um, involving um, garments and accessories although we kind of haven't been shown exactly what those are that we've been teased with some some really interesting bits and pieces so I myself am really really excited about this collection it looks right up my alley. I would really really seriously recommend that you head over to the website. It's making um, makingstories.com. I'll put the the address um, obviously on the screen and down below or check out the Instagram which is at underscore making stories. But this as I said is a self-published endeavour which is where all of you lovely guys um, come in if you wouldn't mind. Heading over to the website they're having a crowdfunding um, to get this collection published and I believe when I checked earlier today they were already on 44% and the crowdfunding hasn't been open for very long which is just incredible. So I mean that kind of gives you a very clear sign of how many people are already behind this project and how many people are excited about it. But you can head over to the website and you can basically pledge various amounts. I think that you can just start at something like five euros which is amazing. I just think it's very important to show support to these type of things because my goodness this is a talented group of people and it'll just be so amazing when this comes out oh I'm so excited but yes please go over to their website because they can explain about the whole project considerably better than I can um I'll put like I said all of the details down below please pledge if you can there are some lovely things that you can buy you know you can buy the collection of patterns plus some little extra bits and pieces it's really really worthwhile but yes head over see whether you like it as much as I do and then please give generously to support these incredible women and in everything that they're doing one more thing before we get on to all of the knitting goodness I reached a very exciting milestone this week which has kind of left me a little bit flawed so I want to say a huge huge thank you to everybody who supports this channel, to everybody who has recently subscribed because at this point Inside Number 23 has reached over 10,000 subscribers <sighs> which honestly leaves me utterly flawed. For those of you who've been with me since the very beginning you'll know that when I reached kind of some lesser milestones than this although they were considerable to me at the time I did get incredibly emotional and I think I cried on the podcast it's all very embarrassing but um I I can't believe that that many of you would want to subscribe it makes my heart so full I can't even tell you and just thank you so much when I started this endeavor um just over a year ago I never man I never imagined that it would become what it has become it means so much to me we've created an incredible community here and I just thank you from the bottom of my heart for all your love and your um well wishes and your support it means everything I I really have no words to show how grateful I am. You are amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna move on before I get emotional because we all know that that is a very very distinct possibility when it comes to me and talking about you lovely lovely guys. <laughs> so we're gonna move on to the first section of the podcast this week and that is what's on my needles? And I have been very, very busy this week. I have managed to finish up a couple of different projects and I'm really, really excited to share them with you. I have two finished objects. I mean, I suppose it's kind of two and a half because one of them I had basically finished last week, but now I have it in all its completely finished glory to share with you. But something that I wanted to put together because it's always difficult to show off finished objects properly in this kind of a video, particularly garment and bigger projects, I enlisted the help of my um, long-suffering husband Emrys and he very graciously um, did a little bit of filming for us to, to show off these two particular finished objects. So now for your viewing pleasure, here is a little finished object video.
I know it's silly, but I really, it's it's fun for me to be able to see my garments and that type of thing actually out in the world looking really quite nice. I'm really, really happy with them. But now that I've shown you what they are, obviously my cardigan and my shawl, I am now going to show you them in a little bit more detail and just kind of talk you through. I'm going to start off with my cardigan. This is my pumpkin spice cardigan, but you guys will know it as the Andy Satterland pattern, the um, blaster. And I had had this finished last week, but I hadn't got the buttons yet. I didn't actually have any buttons at that point, but I went out this week with my mum. We went to Loop in London and I got some buttons for my cardigan. So here the buttons are. I know that we gave you a lovely close up in the video, but aren't they gorgeous? So like I said, these came from Loop. And Loop has a really, really amazing selection of buttons, you guys. I know everybody always goes on about their yarn and how beautiful the yarn is there, but they just have such fun buttons. And these ones are actually shell, but then they have the, the kind of coloured um, part over the top. So this orange, which goes so well with the orange of the yarn of my cardigan, which by the way is Eden Cottage Yarns. This is their Boland DK yarn. It's 100% um, Blue Face Leicester, and this is the Autumn colorway, and I am obsessed with it. I am so happy to have this finished. I absolutely love it. It's really, really gorgeous, and it's a real dream to wear. I wore this at Unravel yesterday, and a lot of lovely people commented on it, and it's very striking without being completely neon and over the top, not that there's anything wrong with neon, as you're going to see from my stash enhancements a little bit later, but the thing that I love about it is this detailing around the waist is so flattering. I mean, I have a relatively kind of small waist in comparison to my bust and hips, but it's definitely not small as it was maybe a couple of years ago. I've eaten a lot of pizza since then, but this made my waist look really tiny, so I really, really appreciated that. And I'm just, oh, I just love it. I think it's glorious. And the yarn was an utter dream. This is my first time working with Eden Cottage yarn, and I can tell why so many people just rave about it. But one other detail that I wanted to share with you is something that I've decided that I'm going to be doing with all of my cardigans from now on, is I actually, took a piece of grow grain ribbon and hand stitched it to the other side of the button band that has the buttons to give it a little bit more strength and make it a little bit more sturdy. I'm really loving the fact that it just adds that extra little special touch to um, the garment. Ideally I would have had something fun and maybe a novelty print ribbon to go on here but I think the red looks really really cute and in future I shall be keeping my eyes open for lovely grey grain ribbons um, at haberdasheries and that type of thing to be able to use with my cardigans but everything about this garment makes me so happy. It fits like a dream, the yarn is wonderful. Big thumbs up on all levels and of course it is Andy Satterland, she is one of my all-time favourite designers and yeah I couldn't be happier with how this turned out so hurrah! The other finished object that I shared in that video was of course my Find Your Fade shawl. This is a pattern that has been completely overtaking the entire knitting world so it seems by the incredible Andrea Mowry. It is a beast as you most probably saw from um, my video. I can have this draped around my shoulders and it drags on the floor on both sides if it's on my shoulders. But yes, it is entirely finished. I blocked it this week which was an adventure in itself because who has the space in order to block something this large? I must admit the blocking job that I did on this was relatively shoddy. Um, I had to block it on a large stretch of floor. It was um, kind of in our study and then very slowly encroaching on the landing area of our house because it was just so big. And I didn't measure it, you guys. I'm not gonna lie, I should have measured it when it was lying down flat, but suffice it to say, it is a beast. It's huge and again, it's difficult for me to show you in this small space that we're in now, which is why I included the video. But let me quickly go through um, my yarns again, for those of you who are, who are interested. So at the start here, we have Vulan Vine Yarns in Venus Flytrap. 
going into a homespun house in Xenophilius Explains the Deathly Hallows, going into, oh, I'm showing you the wrong side, <laughs> Xenophilius Explains the Deathly Hallows, going into Sweets Barry Arms in the Miss Honey colourway, and look at how beautiful that lace has blocked out. Oh my goodness. Um, going into Fall on the Fox in the Fantastic Mr Fox colourway, which melts into Shirsty Cat in the Candy Swirl colourway, which then melts into Life in the Long Grass in the Tough Turf colourway, which finally melts into, in this last segment here, um, my John Arbor Knit by Numbers in the colourway 74, but this goes on and on and on and on and on to this little, this little point down here. So it's completely finished and I was so happy to get this off the needles you guys. I'm going to put it on just so you can kind of see. I am still fiddling with this in terms of how to wear it because it's so ginormous because even if I do this you're not going to see all of the colours. You're really really not. It's just kind of having it wrapped around. I'm going to stand up so you can see it a little better. Just having it wrapped round. And kind of collecting at the front you get the the end here and the end here all kind of collecting in one place so it does end up looking quite nice I think when it's literally just wrapped around once and if you arrange it in a certain way you can get the the point of the asymmetrical shawl kind of falling down but yeah I need to play around with it and kind of work out how I'm comfortable wearing it. It is huge. I must admit last night I was just wearing this draped around my shoulders um, kind of full on old traditional shawl style and it kept me so warm when we were watching um, some TV um, in bed last night and it was really really cosy so I loved it for that. I don't know how much I'll wear it out out because it really is so huge but um, I really really love it but I was very glad to finish it I'm not gonna lie people have been saying how much they've enjoyed the entire process of knitting this and by the time I was getting to my final sections it was a real trial for me it was just the endless rows of garter stitch and I'm not I'm not a massive anti-garter stitch person. I know I talked about garter stitch last week and how I was finding it frustrating, but it's not something that I despise because I'm currently working on another project that involves garter stitch, um, which, is, which is really great. I think it was just the sheer size of this by the time I was getting to the end. I just couldn't, I couldn't handle it any longer. You guys, I really, really couldn't. But um, I'm really happy that it's done. It looks lovely, it feels great when I wear it, it's very very hot, so even though it's not especially warm today, I am going to be taking this off again. I just think I need to embrace the fact that I'm going to be wearing a giant shawl out into the world, and once I do that, everything will be fine. But yes, find your fade, finally done, really gorgeous, really happy with it, and um, hopefully I shall be taking it out for a spin in the real world sometime soon. That's all of the finished objects that I have, but I do have some works in progress to share with you. And first up, I actually have a hoe! Yes, I have a half object, which isn't something that I've had for a while because I've been knitting all of my socks two at a time. This sock I did one at a time and I have one finished. <laughs> I think I shared this with you, the start of this last week. Ta-da! I have a hoe! Isn't it glorious? Look at this yarn. Oh my goodness me. I... I am really obsessed with how beautiful this looks. Oh, it's gorgeous. But this was my first ever um, sock knit with Nathan Taylor's um, toe up sock recipe, the sock notition um, toe up sock recipe. And um, I had put out the call for you guys to let me know if you knew of any patterns that had a heel flap and gusset construction using toe up socks. And so I decided that from all of your um, enthusiasm about it, this was going to be the pattern that was the one that I would start off with. And you guys, I was really, really happy with it. It's produced a sock that fits like a dream. I am so happy with how this sock fits. I genuinely feel that this is the recipe that I will be using for my vanilla socks from now onwards. So hurrah, Nathan, you have converted me to your, um, your toe up um, 
kind of heel flap and gusset construction. I absolutely love it. In terms of the yarn that I've used for this sock, this was from lovely Molly of a homespun house. This is a um, Harry Potter sock club colorway. It's called Dumbledore's Favorite, which you can tell from just looking at it. It's all of the colors of kind of Dumbledore. Um, it's got these beautiful golden browns, purples, kind of dusty pinks. I love it. Knitting it was an utter dream and I'm very excited to cast on the second one. And it just fits so well. I'm really, really happy with it. And um, and yeah, I don't have second sock syndrome with this. I'm excited to, to get the next one on the needles, which for me is, is kind of crazy. But I think in a way it's because I have been knitting so many socks two at a time and that does take me a little bit longer, obviously, because you're working on two socks rather than one. But this felt like it really just flew off the needles. It it just kind of, it was done. So maybe that's the way to go. Maybe it's to have some socks that I do individually as well as some socks that I'm doing two at a time just to add a little bit of a little bit of diversity into, into my sock knitting life. But yes, this will be my February Harry Potter sock for the Harry Potter knit along, because obviously Harry Potter themed yarn. I, it kind of looks like I'm just finding different ways to display this sock. I'm putting it here, I'm putting it here, I'm putting it there, I'm putting it up like this. Um, but from every angle it looks wonderful. Yes, can't beat Molly's yarn. Very, very happy with Nathan's pattern and yay. Happy days, happy, happy days. So that's my first kind of half object slash work in progress. I have one other work in progress to share with you this week. And I was very, very naughty because the project that I should have been working on is my Wayne Thrupp cardigan, which is another pattern by Andy Satterland and is a project that I want to get finished in, <laughs> in time for Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which feels like it's it's creeping up on me by degrees now because I, I don't have much time to get that cardigan finished. But the project that has led me astray is one that I've wanted to cast on since I got back from New York because the yarn was actually very 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 generously gifted to me by Maureen of um, the Green Mountain Spinnery who I visited in her booth at Vogue Knitting Live and she was just wonderful and the company um, Green Mountain Spinnery is just amazing. Look into them in more detail because they are amazing and they have the most incredible yarn. And um, it was a combination of that yarn and the lovely, wonderful Mina Phillips Snow Day Shawl. And I've been desperate to cast on the Snow Day Shawl since meeting um, Mina again in um, New York and seeing hers in person and then Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi I believe has now finished hers and I just knew I had to cast it on. Um, after having done the Find Your Fade shawl the day that I cast off that shawl was the day that I cast on the Snow Day shawl so it was just a continuation of shawls through projects. It's a three coloured shawl, it involves garter sections and textured sections and this is how far I have gotten this week. So you, I started off here. This colour is called Grey um, by the Green Mountain Spinnery. Going into my textured section here, this green colour is called Evergreen. And then now going into the purple colour, this textured section here, the purple is called Purple Rain. So I'm now on to the purple section of the garter and like I said, I'm not completely averse to garter because with this, I am absolutely loving it. And to just kind of put into perspective how quickly this is, my little progress keeper that I have down here, my little dragon marks where I was last night and I managed to do all of this in an evening, which is kind of insane. It's gonna be a lovely triangular shawl. This is gorgeous, like thick, lovely, woolly, sheepy yarn. This yarn smells so sheepy, it's great. Rolly wants it so much. If I'm ever knitting on this project when Rolly's around, he just goes nuts. He wants to eat it because it smells so gorgeous and sheepy. But I'm now getting to the purple, well, the third colour um, garter section. And it's just gonna be amazing. I love this so much. I am working on this um, using my higher, higher sharps, 
my favourite ever interchangeable set of needles, um, 4.5 millimetre needles, and this just knits up really, really lovely. I must admit, I did confuse myself with the first time that I did the textured section. For some reason, I was not following the pattern as it was written, and that was entirely my fault. It's very clearly written, I was just completely overcomplicating things. So I did need to rip back. Um, when I'd done the first couple of repeats of the texture um, between the green and the grey colours that I have here. I can't wait for this to be finished. It's going to be gorgeous and I know that it's going to be something that I'm going to want to wear all the time because it's giving me the same feel as my void shawl, um, which I love to wear and kind of snuggle in the cold. That is the kind of the main work in progress that I've been working on this week. I've not really wanted to knit on anything else but like I said, it may have to take a little bit of a sleepy slumber <laughs> for a little while just while I crack on with my Wainthrop cardigan and get that finished so that I can wear it at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. That project is actually living in a bag that is a part of my stash enhancement which I can't wait to share with you as well but the combination of that project and the bag which you'll soon realise when you see it why it's so amazing um, has just made this the best project to work on. <laughs> It just makes me so happy. So that's everything that I've been working on this week and we are now moving on to the guilty guilty section of the podcast except I am refusing to feel guilty because all of these things bring me huge amounts of joy and who's to say that I can't spend money on yarn because yarn is awesome and whether or not I already have a lot of yarn which I do this will all get knit eventually so that is fine. <laughs> But without further ado, it is time for stash enhancement. <laughs> All the talk of not having more stash before Edinburgh Yarn Festival has kind of gone out the window this week because of um, number one, visiting Unravel. But before we even get on to Unravel, a very, very special parcel actually arrived in the post this week, which I am so excited about. I had ordered a very special Valentine's Day kit from three incredible women who had collaborated to produce what I think is one of the most number one imaginative and number two exciting collaborations that I have ever seen and once I saw this kit it was a little bit naughty of me to buy it but oh, my goodness you guys once you see what was in it you are going to die and it is a collaboration between Addicted to Sock Knitting um, Knox Yarn Co and Valkyrie Fibres. I kind of found out about the kit through watching um, Jacqueline of Brooklyn Knit Folk. She was knitting some um, Knox Yarn Co yarn um, for the Harry Potter cal, I believe. And I remember thinking, wow, that is beautiful yarn. So I checked out um, Knox Yarn Co on Instagram and I fell down a rabbit hole of amazingness. She is an incredible dyer. And through her Instagram, I headed over to Valkyrie Fibers Instagram. And that's where I found out about this incredible kit. And the kind of theme was Doctor Who. Specifically, the images that were kind of coming up around this kit were David Tennant and Billy Piper as the Doctor and Rose. So without further ado, I'm going to show you what came in the kit. The first kind of lovely bit of yarn, I can't believe how cool this is, I really can't, um, is by Valkyrie Fibres. The colourway is called Allons-y, it's a self-striping colourway, and look at this. Is this not number 10 doctor all over it's the most incredible self-striping so it has tardis blue but then it also has this lovely golden brown and a dark brown and i believe that there's a kind of speckled color in there if you can see that lighter color this is just the epitome of david tennant as the doctor as far as i'm concerned and the second that i saw this i thought i have to get that and make emrys a pair of socks with this because he will love them and i think that that yarn is incredible it's just so cool this is actually my first ever gobstopper yarn as well i've never got self-striping like this and i'm very very much enjoying it but yes this is going to become a pair of socks for emrys he already knows that he's getting them he's very excited and I want to cast these on as soon as possible I kept them as they were because I wanted to show it to you in its lovely um kind of gobstopper glory and that is the label 
Valkyrie fibres, which is fabulous. Um, but I do want to cast this on um, as soon as I can because I want to enter these socks in lovely canvas of pin feathers and pearls. Pin feathers and pearls is doing a stripy socks cal again and this would be perfect for that. So yay, gonna be having stripy socks for Amaris, which is really, really exciting. The other skein of yarn is going to be socks for me, <laughs> which is nice because it's like a treat for him and a treat for me all at the same time. This yarn is from Knox Yarn Co. And oh my gosh, I genuinely think that this will have to be another pair of Mercury socks. And I know you guys are going to be like, not another pair of Mercury socks, you've already knit two. But I just know that this yarn will look incredible with that lace pattern. I mean, maybe I'll find a different lace pattern, but I just love the Mercury sock pattern, guys. I really, really do. But without further ado, this is the colorway. Oh my goodness. Look at it. I'm going to show you the back as well so you can kind of get the full speckled gloriousness. It's so subtle and beautiful and it comes with this gorgeous coordinating blue which is very much a kind of TARDIS blue um, but a little less kind of like in your face as, as proper TARDIS blue. This is Love and Monsters. Guys, I could not say no to this and I'm genuinely so happy that I have these yarns and look at them together. It's the Doctor and Rose. I can't even handle how beautiful both of these are. I'm going to absolutely adore knitting with these and both Emrys and I wearing them. It's gonna just be so much fun. I'm so excited, but this just makes me want to buy all the Valkyrie Fibers yarn and all of the Nox Yarn Co yarn in the world because I think that they're incredible. Thank you guys so much for creating such incredible yarn, but it doesn't stop there. Because to be honest, the yarn was amazing and that would have kind of made me want to buy the kit anyway. But the thing that really sealed the deal for me when it came to getting this kit was when I saw the bag by Addicted to Sock Knitting. I can't even tell you how awesome this is, you guys. I'm gonna kind of show it to you in part. So this kind of fabric is beautiful anyway kind of blocking myself out so you can see it. So how pretty is that? Lovely white background, blue design going with it. But then when we kind of see a little bit more of what's going on down here. <laughs> how amazing is this? This is a Dalek in this beautiful picturesque kind of English countryside scene. And on the back, that's that's the police box, that's a TARDIS in the same way. I, <laughs> I can't even tell you how amazing this is. Oh my goodness. The inside is also pretty awesome. It's hot pink polka dots. I love it as well. It's so sturdy. It can literally just sit up on its own. It's fantastic, but the quality is just stunning. But the combination of all of these three in one kit it just blows my mind. This is what I'm talking about when I said one of the best collaborations I've ever seen because it genuinely feels like this has been so well thought out. But one last thing, because lovely, lovely Lauren of Valkyrie Fibres actually sent an additional little gift along with the incredible Doctor Who goodness that I'd purchased for myself, which is so generous. Um, I can't even handle how generous it is. But she actually included an additional skein of self-striping yarn and what is incredibly exciting about this is that it's Lord of the Rings themed. It's from her Middle Earth series. It's the Misty Mountain colorway which is all these gorgeous greys and oh it's sickening how beautiful this yarn is. It also comes with a little coordinating um, stitch marker which is so so sweet as well if you can see that there and so generous and completely unexpected. I was just expecting all these goodies for me and it ended up there were some goodies for you as well. So thank you, Lauren. That is just incredibly generous of you. And guys, I'm not gonna be doing a giveaway with this right away. I'm gonna be hanging on to this until I have an amazing occasion to actually be sending it out into the world. But check out all three of these ladies. They're amazing. Show them love because they are awesome and 
I'm just so excited to have some of their lovely goodies in my hot little hands. <laughs> The second part of my stash enhancements this week is all about Unravel. Um, like I said, my mum and I went to Unravel yesterday on the last day, that is, that was Sunday. It was very last minute, like I said, that we ended up going, but I'm so glad that I did. I had a wonderful time. Thank you to everybody who came up and said hello. It was really appreciated. I know it can be intimidating to come and say hi, but I love it when people come um, and have a chat with me. And so that was, that was fantastic but I'm gonna talk about a couple of things specifically that I bought in reference to some lovely ladies that I actually managed to meet while I was at Unravel. Um, one of the main reasons that I wanted to go to Unravel was that I knew that some people were going to be there that I have having, I've had contact with, um, but I've never met in person. So when I found out that lovely, lovely Amy of Stranded Dye Works was going to be um, vending at Unravel, to be honest, that kind of made the whole decision on whether to go or not a bit of a no-brainer. And I knew that she was going to be um, vending there for quite some time, but it completely slipped my mind for some reason. And I suddenly went to my mum, let's go, because I want to meet Amy and I want to catch up with her and that will be incredible. So first of all, I finally met Amy, which was wonderful. She is as delightful um, in person as she is on her podcast, um, which I mentioned a couple of episodes ago, Stranded Podcast. I'll again, link her um, shop details and her podcast details down below but um, Amy it was such a joy to meet you in person and my goodness you guys the yarn that this lady dyes will just blow your mind I did get a couple of things and <laughs> I am not ashamed I'm not ashamed because um, Amy is incredibly talented and I'm very happy to show her support by buying her gorgeous things and they get to come and live with me now, which makes me very, very happy. One thing that I pretty much knew that I would be picking up was a skein of her incredible Flamingo Legs colorway. And let me just show you this. Oh my goodness, you're gonna go nuts for this. If you haven't seen this yarn before, it's beautiful. And it's all these kind of corals um, and sort of orangey pinks, which is great because this is pink without being too pink, 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 because I'm not really a hugely pink, pink, pink person. Um, occasionally I do enjoy pink, but coral is really much more my scene, kind of orangey pinks. So this is just glorious. It has all this kind of darker black speckling in it as well, but Amy actually had a sample of how this knits up and it is so subtle when it's actually knit into and um, she had it just in a sock and I just went nuts for it I absolutely love it my mum loved this colorway as well she was a very big fan this is on her oasis base so it is just um a superwash merino nylon blend which I do like for socks but she also carried this on pretty much all of her other bases including a DK base an MCN base a singles base and um but yes I picked it up for socks specifically and I'm very, very happy with it. It's so gorgeous. But I was very, very excited to be able to pick up a skein of yarn that's actually on her newest base. This was a base that's actually debuting at, um, that was debuting at Unravel. This is the Rugged base. Look at this colour, you guys. I told you that there's nothing wrong with neons, right? Earlier in the episode. <laughs> I've gone a little neon crazy recently. This colour is called um, Limoncello and it is Aran weight. It's gorgeous. It's 100% merino. And when I saw it, I really couldn't say no. I've been very, very attracted to heavier weight yarns recently. And I think a lot of that is because as you can see behind me, I have a huge amount of fingering weight yarn, which I'm very, very happy to have, but I'm starting to branch out a little bit more and kind of experiment with buying single skeins of heavier weight yarns. So I don't have a pattern in mind for this just yet, but I know that this is going to be a hat and it's going to be the most incredible hat in the world because you will not be able to miss me when I have this hat on. Maybe I should just wear it like this some crazy kind of hairband accessory it looks amazing but I am ah oh, I could have bought so many skeins of yarn from Amy genuinely she is one talented lady and you should check her out the next time that she has a shop update in addition to being so talented she is also incredibly generous and she allowed me to grab a skein again for you guys 
So I picked up another skein of Flamingo Legs because I think you'll love it just as much as I do. I think it's beautiful. And again, I'm gonna be hanging on to this finding something special to give it away for. But thank you, Amy, so much for your generosity and just being so lovely. And I genuinely hope that we get to meet up and spend loads of time together soon. It will be amazing. And yeah, big, big thumbs up for Amy and Stranded Dye Works. There were two other places that I actually purchased things at Unravel. Um, the next store was something that I found out about um, literally I think the day before I went to Unravel I heard that this lady was going to be vending from the various pictures of other people who were at Ravel, Unravel having a lovely lovely time kind of on the Friday and the Saturday and I hadn't even realised she was going to be there and I was so excited and that was hand dyed by Kate and you may or may not remember that kind of last year Kate was very very generous enough to send me a beautiful skein of her hand dyed yarn um, in the pumpkin spice latte colourway which I knit up into some I love you more than pumpkin spice socks which is a beautiful pattern by Cece Alman of the Geeky Girls Knit podcast who I hopefully will be bumping into at some point at Edinburgh Yarn Festival that would be very exciting um, but I loved the yarn and I thought it was wonderful. So to be able to meet Kate in person again was an utter joy. And I picked up a couple of skeins of her yarn. I say I, um, my lovely mummy actually purchased these for me as a gift because she is nothing if not the most generous woman I know and also a terrible enabler apparently because um, she ended up buying me not one but two sock sets from lovely Kate. And the thing that I love about these sock sets, which I'm going to say before I show you the colours, I know you're dying to see them, is that the actual total yardage of them comes out at 70 grams of yarn. Now I don't know about you but when I knit up socks a lot of the time I have a huge amount of yardage left over. I have so many end skeins of yarn particularly from when I'm knitting socks. So just having 70 grams is really useful. What you get is 50 grams of the main colour and then 20 grams of a contrast colour for heels, cuffs and toes which for one thing gives a really interesting sock um, and for another thing it just is not too much yarn so I really love it and I picked up two different colours. This one I couldn't resist um, after seeing how the sample knit up. Kate showed me how this colour actually knits up and I nearly died and that is this one. So this is very rainbowy as you can see. The colour, the main colour at the bottom here is called Colour Theory and oh my goodness just look at all of those colours it's insane I'm so excited and it comes with this lovely contrast um, dark blue for the heels cuffs and toes this is going to be amazing I'm pretty sure that for this it will be vanilla socks because I want the colours to really be the thing that is the focus for these socks that is Kate's label hand dyed by Kate which is lovely the other colour I said that I had a thing for neon at the moment. <laughs> this is not coming up as vibrant as it is in real life on the podcast. It literally glows. I think Kate was saying it's actually black light sensitive, this pink. Um, this does not have a colourway name on it, so I presume it's just because it's just highlighter pink. But it comes with this lovely contrast grey, which I really, really love. So again, this I think is going to be some, some crazy patterned textured socks because having such a lovely vibrant colour, I, I can't help but use that for something with a bit more texture. Hand dyed by Kate, she is incredible. She has such an incredible variety of different colourways and yarns. Just a lovely, lovely lady as well. So thank you, Kate, for, for being so wonderful. It was so lovely to meet you properly. And I can't wait to knit these up. I'm going to be knitting socks until the day I die, apparently, because that's how much yarn I currently have. I have one more acquisition from Unravel, and it's not yarn, you guys, it is a pattern book. Um, this is something that I've been wanting to buy for a little while. When I found out that Rachel Coopy was going to be vending at Unravel, I had to pick up one of her sock books. And I genuinely did think about buying um, her 
kind of older sock books which I don't have, volumes one and two, which are beautiful and filled with incredible um, sock patterns. I'm definitely taking a mental note of those for future gifts in case any of my family members want to push in the right direction. But what I ended up picking up was um, her volume one of Socks Yeah, which I love. Um, Socks Yeah! It deserves some kind of a, a theme tune, I think, but this is a combination of both colour work socks and textured socks. So it includes a lot of patterns, oops, I'm just dropping it, a lot of different patterns, and they are glorious. They are absolutely wonderful. I'm so excited about working on some of these. Just looking at them makes my heart happy and there's definitely some in here that I can imagine myself using for my hot hot pink yarn. Um, but basically this book is Rachel Coopy using the the Socks Yeah yarn which was also on on sale at Unravel. I didn't end up picking up any of the specific sock yarn but it's gorgeous. I really think I don't know if Rachel's going to be vending at Edinburgh Yarn Festival, but if she is, I may keep a bit of my budget back for some Socks Yeah yarn because it's lovely. I'm just excited to use this book because it's just really, really, really beautiful in the way that it's put together. The sock patterns are really exciting. Um, there's some interest in here and some, some really cool techniques and... I, I just love it. I'm, I'm a big, big sock knitting fan right now. So this is going to be right up my alley, I think. And um, I'm going to stop looking at it because that's incredibly um, antisocial. But once I've had a proper look through it and once I've actually knitted from it as well, I may put together some kind of book review. Because it's been a while, hasn't it, since we guys have had a little a little review, but that would be fun. So yeah guys, that is everything in terms of my mahoosive, gluttonous yarn intake that has happened recently. I'm just a big yarn piggy. I'm a big yarn piggy. I am the yarn glutton. I am the yarn glutton, but I'm not feeling guilty about it. It just brings me huge amounts of joy. I am the yarn glutton. <laughs> That is everything for the main yarny content of the podcast this week. It's been very, very heavy on the yarn content this week, I must admit, but we are now moving into the final segment of the podcast, which is, of course, General Waffle. General Waffle. For those of you who are new to the podcast, my general waffle is where I basically waffle on about anything or everything that I want to. There are no limits within this. I've had some emotional heart heart talks with you guys. Emrys often pops in to talk about movies or podcasts as we did the other week. But this week I actually decided to answer a question from my Ask Me Anything thread in Ravelry. Just this week I had quite a fun question from Miriam Hannah 29 who is Mimi on Ravelry. So hi Mimi! And your question specifically was what my favourite musical is and whether or not I'm kind of excited about any new shows or musicals that are going to be heading to London or um, Broadway in the near future. So when it comes to my favourite musical it's a little bit complicated because the musicals that I really love are often not considered to be the best musicals. <laughs> the reasons that I love particular shows are linked to a whole myriad of different things, personal experiences, actually being in shows where I was at a time in my life when I saw a show, kind of emotional connections to shows. One of my favourite musicals of all time is The Phantom of the Opera by Andrew Lloyd Webber and it's not necessarily fashionable to say that you like Andrew Lloyd Webber, to be honest, he is kind of, with the newer things that he produces, is not as on it as he used to be when he's younger in terms of being a composer, but that's understandable. And his music is now quite dated in the whole musical theatre scene. If you compare something like Phantom of the Opera to Hamilton, you'll see what I mean when I say that it's dated. However, Phantom of the Opera was one of the first ever musicals that I ever saw, and I absolutely adored it. I was seven years old, I think, when we first went to see it. We were also sitting in the gods of the theatre, which is the very, 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 very top of the theatre. Um, I have terrible fear of heights, so I was kind of 
terrified for my life from the second that the music started which is the overture um they have a kind of gentle opening to the show if you if you've seen it you'll see what i mean they have some people come out and they're kind of bidding on different items that were in the theatre at this time of this of when the theatre was kind of overtaken by the phantom and and then suddenly all of the the music the organ just starts with the da, 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 phantom music and all of these i think <laughs> they called it something like 101 camp things to do with curtains i think is what the newspapers said when the show came out because basically curtain after curtain after curtain lifts from the bottom of the stage going up to the top it's so over the top and ridiculous it's insane that's basically the whole style of phantom of the opera it's very b-movie camp but i love that kind of thing <laughs> you know i've always been a fan of that kind of style and that's a lot more kind of representative in in my taste in films now is that i love horror films in particular I do love classic b-movie horror films I think that they are fantastic and so that style and the opulence of it because Phantom is one of the only shows I think that you can see now that really has that sense of old West End musicals when it looked like there was just money dripping from every set piece you know when the Phantom takes Christine down to his lair and candles rise out of the floor and he's on a boat it changes into a boat that then kind of crosses the stage and can you imagine at seven years old when you've never really experienced a show to go and see something like that it just blew my mind and i think it really left a very deep impression on me as to how what theatre can do and how dramatic and incredible and over the top you can be in theatre and nobody even cares. People love it and they clap for you. You know, that was the moment for me when I thought this is what I want to do with my life. And in particular, Christine was the part that I always wanted to play. Um, she is a soprano, an operatic soprano. I mean, a musical theatre version of an operatic soprano, really. But there was no one else out there that was kind of singing like that. Um, in, in shows when I was growing out there were no real soprano parts and that was always what I loved to sing I basically got hired in the majority of jobs that I did for, for being able to sing quite ridiculously high I had a very 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 large vocal range in particular focusing on the very top end of the soprano roles I got cast specifically in shows because I could sing higher than other people and they needed someone who could sing the ridiculously high notes that's kind of what my bread and butter was so for me being that kind of a singer and um, being able to see that kind of a voice being um, really showcased in a musical just was my dream. It really, really would have been a dream come true if I'd ever had the opportunity to play that role. I also love the melodrama of it. I love the unrequited love aspect of it because I'm a hopeless romantic. I'm a huge gothic horror fan and if gothic horror involves an unrequited love, all the better. Um, it ticks all the boxes for me and no it's not trendy for a lot of people to say that they love that show but I do, I adore it, I think it's wonderful. There are a couple of other shows that kind of represent the type of musicals that I enjoy and that is more cult musical theatre. Um, one of my favourite musicals is Little Shop of Horrors. I do love the film, I think the film is fantastic but um, seeing the actual live version I have done that a couple of times and I just love the show. I love how ridiculous and over the top and melodramatic it is. Can you see that there's a theme here running through my favourite shows but I did get the opportunity to play Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors. Um, and it was one of the most wonderful experiences I've ever had. It was incredible. I loved it. I adore the show. And there's also a lesser known cult musical called Bat Boy, which is one of my favourites of all time. It's by the same writer who wrote Legally Blonde, which you've probably heard of if you're a musical theatre fan, um, Lawrence O'Keefe. I saw this production when it was on um, the original Broadway, the original West End cast in London. I saw it the week that it closed. Um, I realised that I absolutely adore it and ended up seeing it three times in the last week that it was open in the West End. And again, incredibly kitsch, incredibly silly, very over the top, but one of the best pieces of theatre that I've ever seen to this day. So yeah, I would say those would probably be my top three, you know. 
Phantom of the Opera, uh, Little Club of Horrors and Bat Boy, but they're, my love of musical theatre really spans across a huge amount of different styles, different shows at different times, depending on what point I am in my life. I feel that I respond to different music because that's the glory of musical theatre as it is. Um, it can affect you on so many levels and there's always a piece of musical theatre music that can represent how you're feeling at any point in your life. In terms of excitement about other projects coming over, to be honest, at the moment I'm gonna have to say no. I think I'm very excited that Hamilton is obviously transferring to the West End, that's great, but one thing that I think is a little bit sad about current shows in London is that the majority of them are transfers, shows that have been worked on and developed elsewhere and then have moved to London. Uh, musical theatre in London used to have this, this really great scene of writers who would create new musicals and everything would be done here, but now it very much feels like that's not happening. I don't, by any stretch of the imagination, think that's because there's a lack of composing talent in this country at all. Um, I don't think that's what's changed. I think that without getting too political, um, <laughs> there is very, very little arts funding um, in our society here in the UK at the moment. Um, the arts has been taking a lot of rubbish from the government for quite some time and it's got to the point now where there's been so many cuts within arts funding here um, that it's very very difficult to get smaller projects off the ground which means that the majority of things that are put on in the theatre in London are things that have massive private funding and something that's got massive private funding a lot of the time is going to be the big shows. So Hamilton for example was it was always going to be a no-brainer that it would be able to have a lot of private funding and um, when it came over because it's so successful Successful. For example, when I was talking about Bat Boy, I genuinely don't think that a show like that would even get a tiny look in in the current climate climate that we have in um, in performing and the arts in general. People don't want to take risks on something that they don't think is going to make a massive profit, which is completely understandable with any kind of business you want to make a profit. However, it's got to the point now where funding is so short that people are putting money into shows that I don't necessarily think have as much to offer people as they used to. This is entirely my personal opinion. If you disagree with me, that's great, let's have a discussion about it, but that's just how I personally feel about these, um, these particular things within my own experience. And that's not to say that I don't think that there are any great shows out there anymore, that's not true. I just don't think that there is as much room now or much opportunity for those little moments of magic that you get from seeing a small show done for a limited amount of time that changes the lives of the people that see it. And to be honest, kind of one of the reasons why I stopped when I did, but that's a whole other story. So that is everything from us this week, you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, thank you for asking for more of Rolly because he appreciates being here. If you've enjoyed what you've seen this week, do give us a thumbs up, like the video, hit subscribe if you haven't already. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure spending a little bit of time with you this week. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have an incredible week filled with sewing and yarn gluttony and pug cuddles if you can. Um, but for me and this little chappy, we are gonna love you and leave you and we'll see you all next week. Bye.